Hello, I'm Norbert Gleich, MD, and I'm the Medical Director and Chief Scientist here at the CHR. I would like to talk to you about a topic which has been the subject uh, of our newsletters and some other videos repeatedly before. Uh, and that is the idea of testing human embryos for chromosomal abnormalities before those embryos are placed into a woman's uterus. A procedure that used to be called pre-implantation genetic screening and was about two years ago, two and a half years ago now, uh, renamed uh, pre-implantation genetic testing for unemployed or PGTA. Uh, as many of you who have seen our videos or have read our newsletter probably know, uh, we here at CHR uh, for the longest time, and it is now I would say probably more than 15 years, have been pretty strong opponents uh, of this procedure. And uh, the reason why we have been opponents is because we think it is an unreliable test. It is a test that does not uh, fulfill its original promise of improving IVF outcomes. Uh, indeed, very much to the contrary. And what we have witnessed over 20 years, so that's how long uh, this test uh, in its various incarnations has been uh, sold to patients. Uh, in, in all of that time, uh, we have seen that pregnancy rates <clears throat> actually have not been affected. If anything, uh, over the last uh, nine years, to be specific, since 2010, live birth rates in IVF cycles all over the world have been significantly declining. Uh, there's very little talk about that, but when you look at uh, the annually reported live birth rates, you will see that until 2010, live birth rates in the US after fresh non-donor IVF cycles constantly were improving. Over 30 years, basically, there was a constant improvement. Uh, by 2010, it started plateauing, and especially in the last four or five years, the rates in the US have dramatically been declining. And it is not because patients uh, are getting older. Indeed, patients in the U.S. haven't been getting older. The median age has remained steady at around 36 for all IVF centers combined. It is because over the last few years, quite a number of things have been changed in IVF practice without any evidence that these changes make any damn difference. To the contrary, there is increasing evidence that some of these changes actually have reduced pregnancy chances and therefore the drop in live birth rates that we have been witnessing. The last available data uh, for the U.S. Uh, are from 2016 and they are truly disappointing because live birth rates are down to rates that we haven't seen the, uh, since the mid-1990s. And in our opinion here at CHR, the increasing utilization of what is now called PGTA, the examination of embryos, is a very significant contributor. The reason for that is very simple. In so-called good prognosis patients, those are patients who are usually young, who produce a lot of embryos, and those embryos are of very good quality. Whatever you do in those patients, 
really doesn't matter. They will have excellent pregnancy chances. Yes, maybe you can make them a few percentage points better or poorer, but those good prognosis patients will get pregnant quickly and will be highly successful uh, in, in, in their IVF procedures. At the other extreme are so-called poor prognosis patients. And who are poor prognosis patients? Obviously, they are the older patients. They are sometimes younger patients with low ovarian reserve, in other words, with what we call premature ovarian aging. Those are younger patients with older ovaries. And what all of these women have in common is that they actually produce relatively small embryo numbers. And when you have very small embryo numbers available, then every embryo obviously counts more in terms of potential pregnancy chance. And now let's come back to the PGTA procedure where embryos are being tested. And one of the arguments that we here at CHR for the longest time have made uh, against utilization of PGTA was that the procedure produces a very high rate of so-called false positive diagnosis. What that means is that you're getting report back on um, your embryos uh, and embryo 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are declared chromosomally abnormal. And that usually almost automatically means that those embryos will be disposed of. Now imagine that you have only a relatively small number of embryos and all of those are declared abnormal. You will not even make it to an embryo transfer. Imagine further that if you had five embryos that were declared abnormal, three of them were false positives, meaning that they, in reality, are really not abnormal and could have been transferred. By having them disposed, you lost your pregnancy chance. And therefore, this procedure, particularly in poorer prognosis patients, is not only not helpful, but it is outright harmful. And that's why we have been so outspoken uh, against this procedure, because here at CHR we obviously primarily serve so-called poor uh, prognosis patients who have relatively few embryos available for transfer. The good prognosis patients, as I said, will get pregnant whatever you do, because they have a lot of embryos. Even if you discard by mistake a few of their good embryos, they still will have a lot of good embryos left to, to indeed conceive. So this has been our old argument. Uh, and the genetic testing industry, which has obviously grown very rapidly in recent years, and as they grew have become more and more powerful and more and more influential, has been fighting us and colleagues who share our opinions uh, increasingly aggressively. Uh, but from time to time, they have been recognizing that they are running out of arguments. And whenever that happened, they suddenly discovered a new form of the test. And so we have been going through three iterations of this chromosomal testing with the last big change taking place in 2016 uh, when suddenly uh, the testing industry changed how everything was done uh, including changed the name of the procedure. Uh, it was then that for the first time they recognized that there's something like mosaic embryos where there are abnormalities, but they may be transferable. Uh, but once again, since that last change, there has been more and more evidence coming out in the literature confirming CHR's long-standing position that this is basically a worthless test that really shouldn't be done. 
maybe one of the uh, most uh, uh, obvious uh, reports was just published uh, last month uh, after a worldwide survey um, it, it was now established that over 400 healthy babies have been born worldwide after transfer of so-called abnormal embryos. We here at CHR are very proud of having been the first center that started doing these transfers and the first center um, that uh, ever reported healthy babies born from transfers of so-called abnormal embryos. But imagine 400 healthy babies uh, from embryos that otherwise would simply have been disposed of. There's further, in, there, there's further evidence uh, that one big reason why there are so many false positive tests uh, is that nature, as usual, is very smart and that we now have evidence that embryos can self-correct even if the technical procedure called PGTA was technically correct in saying yes there are chromosomally abnormal cells in this embryo this does not yet mean that that embryo at later stages doesn't self-correct itself and ends up being a perfectly normal baby therefore it kind of doesn't make any sense to test embryos on day five at blastocyst stage where we are currently testing them because if they can fix themselves afterwards why do the testing it's kind of like hiring uh, you know a specialist in something before he even goes to school who would do that but yet this is what PGTA does this is a long introduction uh, to a very important update because we are once again coming to a crisis point for the genetic testing industry where their credibility has reached a new nadir and so they are looking again for a new version of the same story and there was recently a paper published uh, in a very prestigious science journal the, of, of the American National Academy of Sciences a very difficult journal to get a manuscript accepted actually where indeed uh, some authors uh, make the claim that they have yet a better method of uh, doing PGTA and this method is not based on biopsying the embryo directly but testing the medium in which embryos are grown for DNA from the embryo that the embryo is secreting into this medium and I will not go into too much technical detail only so much the study is completely ridiculous uh, the whole procedure how this was done uh, has very little scientific basis uh, there is no evidence um, that uh, as the paper claimed uh, this testing is more accurate than testing through embryo biopsy and ultimately again what is the idea of testing an embryo at blastocyst stage if it can self-correct later on. It simply makes no sense. And therefore, if anybody wants to sell you this new so-called non-invasive PGTA through testing of cell-free DNA in so-called spent media, please say no, or at least talk to us before you do it. I hope we will not have to talk much longer uh, about this subject um, because some exciting papers are on the verge of being published uh, from some very prominent uh, research labs which hopefully will put uh, the final nail into this worthless and even harmful procedure. Thank you very much for listening.